My name is Spencer and I'm the 28 year old COO of a $30 million company that got there in only 30 months. In this video, I'm sharing with you eight critical things that you need to remember on your journey in all areas of life if you wanna succeed as an ambitious man. But as a bonus, I'm gonna give you a ninth tip that will put the other eight in a unique context that will make them all so much more valuable. So stick around to the end if you're determined to be someone worth remembering. Before I became who I am today, I used to get distracted by garbage food, excessive gaming, loser substances, so-called friends, and sipping for girls. But to get here, I needed to become disciplined and focused. What I've learned on my journey to get me here today is that even after you adopt a mindset that what you can become, you must become, you can still be ripped out of that mindset by different distractions. Now, I know I never want to slip back into being average again, and that's why I created this list to remind me when things are going wrong. I use these as my shield and as distractions, and I hope that they serve you the way they continue to serve me. So if you're ready, let's get started. Number one, video games are not cool. Video games are fun. But let's say you go into a video game and you kill five, six guys, you save your buddies from a bad guy. I've mentioned this in other videos and you feel like the man. You get all these kills, you've saved all the good guys, you've killed all the bad guys, whatever, you feel like the man. But the reality is, after you put that controller down, all you've done is press a bunch of inconsequential buttons to the rest of the world. Nobody else cares. Nobody cares. If all you're doing is having fun playing video games, all you are is a guy who stares at the TV 12, 15, 16 hours a day, gaming your life away. Again, nobody cares. It's time to be the man in the real world like you want to be not some virtual badass who's doing all this shit in a video game. Stop settling for the virtual version of a cool person. No one cares. Number two, girls don't like nice guys. Now you've heard this one before on different videos and different podcasts, but now it's time to actually understand it. Guys, this doesn't mean to be an asshole and to be rude to women. This just means that a gentleman will casually remind a woman with his actions that his mission and his purpose take precedence and priority over her. He needs to follow his own goals and his own calling before he goes and placates to every single thing that she needs. And on that note, always placating to a woman despite having other responsibilities as a so-called ambitious man, just suggests to her that she's the main goal, not your mission, not your purpose, she's the main goal. And when you do that, in fact, she is. The reality is that most likely your woman wants to be along for the ride. When you constantly make her the goal, she becomes like a celebrity and you become like a fan. But that's not what she wants. She wants you to be the celebrity. She wants to be able to look up to you and to be able to support you through her femininity. So if you mess it all around and get it all backwards, she's going to lose attraction for you very quickly. You see all these yes men who are saying yes to their wives and their girlfriends all the time, despite it always putting their responsibilities and their mission and their purpose in second. Here's the thing, if you wanna become a yes man, that's fine. Just make sure that it's to your mission and your purpose, because when you do it to her, it's gonna have the opposite effect of what you want it to have. If you're gonna say yes, say it to your purpose. Not anything else, not anyone else. Now, number three, actions express priorities. If she wants to see you, she will. Now guys, this applies to all parties really. Like if a job wants you, if a company wants you, they're gonna make it super, super obvious to you. They're gonna reach out to you constantly. You're gonna know that they want you. Same thing as a friend. If a friend wants to see you, they'll shuffle around the schedule with things that are less important to them to make sure that they can fit you in. But if a woman wants to see you, she's gonna move heaven and earth to make that happen. But it's really important to remember the opposite as well. She'll move heaven and earth to see you, but if she doesn't even wanna move one or two fingers to text you back in a timely manner, get the message, guys. She doesn't care. No, she's not busy. Yes, she has checked her phone. No, she doesn't already have plans that day. And yes, she will lose that little bit of respect that she maybe had if you decide to double text her some stupid shit like, hello? Are you there? I miss you. Is everything okay? Okay guys, number four, porn makes your d not work. This is just point blank, period. Porn makes your d not work. Now, I'm not gonna take all the time to go through the science and studies and everything like that. If you wanna ask me anything about that, I can put those in the description. Let me know if you wanna see them, but let me explain. Putting it simply, high-speed internet porn basically keeps your brain in the same level of dopamine secretion as cocaine, or at least very similar. Think about that. A similar level of 
dopamine secretion as cocaine. Now when this happens, what dominoes are beginning to fall, okay? You've all this dopamine which makes you goal-oriented. That's what dopamine does, it makes you goal-oriented. This makes you orgasm-oriented because when you're watching porn, what are you chasing? You're chasing the orgasm. This then rewires your brain to get to orgasm as quickly and as easily as possible. This then makes you suck in bed because as soon as you get into bed, the only thing your brain is wired to do is orgasm as quickly as possible. On the other hand, no pun intended, meaning the other issue that guys struggle with when it comes to porn. So on one side, we have a guy who's orgasming way too quick. And on the other side, you train your brain to be an observer of sex, not a participant. So when you're watching porn all the time, you're observing a lot of sex, but you're not necessarily having a lot of sex. This means that when the time comes, your brain doesn't even register a physical, sexually inclined woman as something to get your heart. Look, even some male porn stars talk about how they don't watch porn because they know it hurts their performance when they're on set and when they're at home. I'm gonna say that again. Some male porn stars don't even watch porn for the exact reasons that I'm telling you. Oh, and shut the fuck up about the relieving stress justification for watching porn. Listen, if you're not making at least 100K a year, you can't locate a single muscle on your body, and you play a part-time job's worth of video games every week, you need the stress. Comfort obviously isn't working for you. Okay guys, point number five that you need to remember. Moderate application yields moderate results. Work-life balance, they say. Work-life balance. The issue with work-life balance is that if you're on this earth to do something great, great things are very rarely received and achieved by moderate application of your time, your effort, your brain, your body. It's very, very rare that really amazing things happen with moderate application of one's resources. Do you honestly think that Elon Musk is very concerned with whether he's working too hard? Or do you think it's more likely that he's constantly preoccupied with figuring out a way that he can give more to his purpose and his mission? Finding a way to dig deeper to give more. The reality is that mediocre performers abide by mediocre life rules. They abide by things like the work-life balance. Mediocre life rules. Point number five is here to remind you that if you wanna to climb to crazy heights, then the climb itself is gonna be a crazy one. If you keep having mediocre inputs, you'll keep getting mediocre outputs. Now, on that note, let's go into point number six. Research is not work. Now, yeah, I understand that some people literally do research as their work. We have clinical researchers and things like that. I understand. But unless that's what your life's mission is about, research is not work. Let me explain this further. What I'm saying is that too many people, and myself, I used to be included, too many people procrastinate doing the actual shit by hiding behind the guise of research or getting prepared, preparing oneself to do the shit. But they do that for years and years and years and years because that's what's comfortable. They don't actually have to take any action. Research is not work though. And I'm saying this to whoever needs to hear it that's constantly browsing the internet, watching videos, reading blogs, thinking that they're making progress towards their mission when they're not. And on that note, the reality is that the only thing that's actually gonna prepare you for the great mission that you wanna embark on, the purpose that you feel you have for your life, the only thing that's gonna prepare you is actually doing the mission. The great American philosopher, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, do the thing and you will have the power. Do the thing and you will have the power. It's not the other way around. It's not do all the preparation and wait for years and then you can get started. It's do the thing and you will have the power. Once you start doing the thing, then you will become able to do it. Once you start doing it. Now, honestly, I do understand this one. This one's hard. It's because the insidious thing about research is it genuinely does feel like you're making progress. It feels like you're going somewhere when really you're staying in the same spot, but living in your imagination. Because you're becoming more and more familiar with something on paper, you feel like you're really doing that in real life. It's kind of like the way, if you want to really experience what space is like, you want to experience what it's like to go to outer space. And all you do is read about it. You become an astronomer, not an astronaut. An astronomer, not an astronaut. And if the mission is to become an astronomer, then that's fine. But if your goal has been, your mission, your purpose has been to be an astronaut, then reading about it all day is not going to get you. And it's especially hard when you're toying with something big or something that's really nerve wracking, like actually speaking to that girl that you like, or starting a business, or going to the gym and losing all that weight and putting on some muscle. It's very easy to begin to research and research and research and just stick there forever. But at a certain point, you just need to do it. Research becomes procrastination because research is not work. Let's move on to number seven. Friends are people who genuinely root for you. 
Now, Dr. Jordan Peterson reminds us that friends are people who you can share good news with. Of course, they're people you can share bad news with and they'll console you when things are rough, but they're people that you can share good news with because they're not gonna try and hijack your win or belittle anything that you've done, belittle your triumphs, or say that, you know, that's okay, but here's what I did, and they wanna constantly make it about them. They don't feel uneasy in comparison to your triumphs. Now, my reminder to you is that if you do associate with someone who's like this, that's okay. I'm just saying they're not your friend. If you tell someone about, you know, the revenue that your new business, your new startup just did, for example, and all they can say is how their business did a little bit more or how you could have pushed a little bit harder and you didn't really do that great. It's okay, but not that great. They're not necessarily your friend. Now, of course, there are people like coaches and mentors and stuff who will push you and say, you know what, that's amazing, but let's strive a little bit further next quarter or next year or whatever. But that's constructive criticism. That's trying to say, yes, this is great. Yes, and. That's awesome what you did, but let's push a little bit further. That's a mentor or a coach or something like that. But someone who's using it to negatively spin it on you, that's not a friend. It's important that the people you keep close are not only people who help lift you up when you're having a hard time on your path and on your journey, but also those who celebrate with you when you do have those great triumphs. And they can't do that if in the back of their head, they constantly want to minimize what you've done because they feel like they're inferior as a result of your good job. But I'm going to share with you guys a little secret. If there's someone who pretends to be close to you, but they don't actually root for you, the reason why is because they're intimidated by the size of your ambition and the size of your dreams and the size of your accomplishments. They're intimidated that they don't dream as big as you. But that's okay, because point number eight. Not everyone's gonna get it, and that's okay. Guys, when you have a mission to do something extraordinary, that means that it's extraordinary. Extraordinary, it's beyond ordinary. So you can't expect the ordinary person to understand and empathize with where you are or where you want to go. They're not gonna understand the inputs that you're putting into your life, your routine, your practices, your work. They're not gonna understand the inputs because they can't even begin to conceive of the size of the outputs that you're looking to get. The choices you make on a day-to-day, -day, the things that you decide to do on a day-to-day -day are gonna seem very strange to the people around you. And they are, they are strange. The things you're doing are strange. But also, being as ambitious as you are and wanting the goals that you want is also strange. Awesome, but strange. You need to understand that even those around you, those that love you, not everyone's called to the same level of mission. Not everyone's called to the same purpose. This is a reminder that we need to have empathy also for those who don't understand and accept that they don't understand and don't feel bad about that. That's okay that they don't understand. Continue to go about what you need to go about to get where you want to go and achieve what you're setting your mind to. Show them where it is that you want to go and where it is that you're going. An ambitious man often seems crazy before they accomplish what it is that they're looking to accomplish, and then they seem like a genius. So just lean into the crazy label, lean into people not understanding, and recognize that one day they're gonna see the vision that you always have. Keep putting in the hard work, the tireless hours, and the discipline to become what you must become, all while remembering this final reminder. Bonus point number nine. One day, you're going to die. Memento mori. The things that you're looking to achieve in this life would be difficult for any man. And you only have so much time to do it because one day you're going to die. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that this final point, point number nine, that we're all going to die, is going to put the other eight points into a very unique context, propane on all the rest and make sure they all burn brighter. Well, here's how it does. These points were all designed to remind me and now to remind you that when you're trying to live a radically fulfilling life and pursue a big mission and a big purpose with this one life that you're given, that oftentimes distractions from all different directions can derail us from this mission. But by remembering daily that one day death comes for us all, we look back on the points in this video and recognize that we must take them more seriously because the clock is ticking. If we keep getting distracted, 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 we are going to lose the time that we have to actualize whatever potential we have within us and become what we must become. We will lose that opportunity. So we must refuse to waste all of the precious time we've been given on things that steal this opportunity away from us. And that is the intention from all of these points in this list. Guys, most men today in the modern world are lost. They're absolutely lost. I think that more men than not have probably seen where they would like to go, maybe when they were a child or something. They've seen where they want to go and they've turned away because of one of two reasons. Now, the first is they saw it and they became intimidated by the size and the mountain that they need to climb to get to the summit. They were intimidated and so they willingly looked away at some point. 
But the second one, much more insidious, the second one is that they wanted to go there and had their attention and their discipline and their focus stolen by some of the distractions that I warn against on today's list. These pitfalls will steal you away from exactly where you want to go, and that's why this list was created. Now, I went from a boring, addicted, distracted sim to being an executive leader of a multi-million dollar corporation before the age of 30 by reminding myself the things on this list and the things that I talked about in this video. Now, if you've watched this far, I know you're someone who's dedicated to becoming what you must become and actualizing the actual potential that you have within you. Therefore, I want to congratulate you on getting to the end of this video. If I had this content when I was starting on my journey to where I am today and where I want to keep going, if I had this when I started, I would consult this kind of a video every day or at least regularly, and that's what I recommend you do as well. If you are serious about pursuing your mission. Finally, if you're distracted by video games or drinking or substances or porn or any of the things that I mentioned in this video if you're distracted by any of it and you know that you want to pursue a mission and it's holding you back check out this video right here where I talk about how to delay pleasure so that you can pursue things that require delayed gratification like all the big things in life all the big missions and big purposes in life that require time check out this video right here and you'll be able to pursue your mission properly thank you so much for watching my name is Spencer with the must become YouTube channel and I'll see you in the next video